Welcome to another audio reading session of Listen In, presented by Tenkar Angler and voiced by Dave Rossett. We are excited to have you with us again. Angling Instinct, an article by Jim Wright. One view of a strange topic, angling and instinct. I claim no special knowledge within the realm of scientific phenomenon. In fact, I failed biology. I only know what I have learned reading books by my heroes and observing the efforts of others and living my own experiences while catching headwaters trout, what works for me and what doesn't. Included in that list would be, number one, how to skip school to attend an early mayfly hatch, and two, what I can only call intuition or instinct. Many authors have addressed this subject over the centuries. Ray Bergman walked me through my own first revelation upon hearing it described for the first time. Ray was very traditional in both his experience and authorship, but the message came through loud and clear to my young ears. Here's an excerpt from that early lesson. I learned to keep my nerves at hair trigger tension so that I reacted instantaneously. Every shadow or flash was treated as a striking fish. It was subtle fishing and developed intuitive reactions to a remarkable extent. Before long, I was seeing things that happened underwater. At the same time, I found that I had to be in the proper mood to have success. It takes only a few weeks to lose that fine sense of perception. Trout, Ray Bergman, 1938. My father took me fishing at a very tender age. I caught my first sucker in the tiny creek that ran through a wooded lot in my quiet neighborhood on the outskirts of town. It gurgled behind my house, not more than a five-minute walk for a four-year-old with a hook and a bobber. We would sprinkle the lawn before bed and stalk our prey by the light of a filtered flashlight. We'd pick our cans full of night crawlers and put them safely to bed under some moist soil for the night. If it was a quiet night and I listened carefully, I could hear the stream singing its siren song as I lay in bed dreaming of tomorrow morning. I, of course, being 12 at the time, must admit to being just a bit impressed by these gentlemen and lady authors slash anglers speaking about instinctive angling in this way. As time passed, I spent many slack times under a hemlock tree in deep contemplation, just such ideas that Ray and others were telling me. My own inspiration was taken from the writings of Ray Bergman, of course, followed by James Leisenring. Mr. Leisenring, I just wanted to type it twice, was an incredible inspiration to me, as was Art Flick's writing, teaching me to tie flies, and surely one of the most influential at the time. They were perfect for me, but it wasn't long before I uncovered evidence of more American and British anglers speaking in the same terms. There was A.J. McLean, Joe Brooks, Joseph Bates, Vernon Hitty, Charlie Fox, and Vincent Marinero, and more recently, Hughes, Nems, and Paul Jorgensen. Now, my father had seen me casting on the lower reaches of an unnamed favorite stream, and I think that he realized that if I was ever able to save any cash for college after wasting every cent on flies from the discount store, he would need to act. I didn't get much college, but I did learn to tie flies and catch trout. A great many writers of anglers and angler writers were telling me the same thing. I do believe that at one point the local librarian, she whom I had borrowed books from for many years, kind woman that she was, might just throw me out of the library or throw a book at me. The latter I usually regarded as the preferable should it come down to it. That depending, of of course, upon the size of said missile or its topic. 
All of my desperate attempts to discover what this strange power over fish might be. So finally, let me get to my point before I forget it. If I go out on the stream and feel good about the day, if I am really focused on the task at hand, paying attention with almost laser-like intensity to my line, my kabari if visible, and at least in the spot that I believe it to be, I began to notice tiny changes in light and movement in water lanes and pockets in front of me. And it made all the difference in the world. And with practice, I began to sense something more. It's almost like you can sense the fish attacking your kabari. And when winter ends and a new season rolls around, it takes some time to warm up to those instincts again. On the other hand, everyone has an off day and it humbles us. What we know is that sometimes, yeah, you just have a bad day. But I could see that it was my instinct that suffered as well. And that intrigued me. A lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. To me, it's similar to the instincts of common predatory species of which we are naturally one. I don't think there is anything hocus pocus about it all. To me, it's just natural human behavior. This force appears to be operating upon some unknown principle of nature, but a principle that we are all familiar with. We just don't expect to find it in ourselves, or is it that we have just lost it through the process of domestication? At any rate, I could see that I was no different than any common fish, otter, or wolf, except that my instincts needed further attention. Is any of this important to catching fish? No, if you are content with your current success. But if you are like me and always seeking to improve your angling skills, paying attention to those little details often pays big dividends. About the author. Jim Wright, the owner of TenkaraFlyShop.com, has pursued trout, studied stream entomology, and tied flies since 1967. He retired his western fly gear, taking up Tenkara in 2012. Thank you for taking this time with Tenkara Angler. We hope you have enjoyed this article. If you have a story to tell, a photo to share, or a fly recipe that's too good to keep secret, we would love to feature your content. Find your way over to TenkaraAngler.com to learn how to submit your contribution for publication.